long time no see. We just had a fantastic <laughs> trip together in uh, Yosemite National Park. And uh, you've also got a book you've just released called Photography Demystified. And we want to talk a little bit about that. But one of the reasons that I'm talking to you all and I'm sharing this with my viewers is because I think you do a really awesome job watching you teach in Yosemite. I really appreciate how you can kind of bridge that, well, I'll call it a divide between the artistically inclined person and the kind of photo geek. And you see, <laughs> especially on YouTube, you know, with reviews, uh, you know, you get people that are very technically inclined and want to know the bits and bolts of how their camera works. For some people, that kind of can be a hang up. Uh, other people just really enjoy it. And then you've got the people, um, you know, you, we've talked about this before, who just want to shoot on auto because they don't want to get into the nerdy details or think that that's going to keep them back from their artistic vision. And so I wonder if you, you would talk a little bit about um, how you work with those people and what advice you would give to, to each of the camps. Yeah, sure. Um, well, first, thanks again for having me on. Like you said, long time no see. <laughs> um, and uh, looking forward to seeing you here in a few days as we go to New Zealand. So okay. that's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, Toby, as we've been out and you've watched um, our whole team teach and get gotten to know us, you know, well when we're out, um, I think that's one of the biggest struggles that, that, that both camps have is, 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 you know, one understands one thing, but like you said, doesn't doesn't want to approach the other, or they're afraid to, uh, especially the artistic minded. They're really afraid of all of the buttons and the technical jargon. It's a whole other language to them, um, you know. And then and then, as you said, you have the technical person that uh, they just enjoy that. They understand that. It's their, the, the way they think um, in terms of learning is is more um, how maybe like an engineer might might think you know and and uh they sometimes have a, a have a, a, a tr the trouble of getting in touch with even their emotions a little bit and i know i might step on some toes out there a little bit with this oh but controversy's it's, it's, good controversy's good okay well it's true it's it's absolutely true and you see it uh when we're out you know and and so um one of the things that I, before I get into any of, of, you know, either side of, of, uh, you know, approaching with one individual or the other, I like to, I like to talk about that, um, before we go out because, or, and in the book, that's how I approach the foundation of the book is that it's not one or the other, it's both. Uh, and as you said, there's a divide there. And what I've found with photography is that, um, you know, the artistic side, which which I'm more artistically inclined, I am not um, I'm not a very techy type person, um, and so uh, I, I find that the artistic person, you know, I have to just um, work with them uh, in a in a manner that uh, is non intimidating, and then that technical person I have to work with them and the same thing not intimidating but try and get them to open up their 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 soul a little bit so to speak and um so that's how I found that's that's the foundation of what I uh when we're out or uh, when I teach is to try and bridge that gap because um as I said it's not one or the other I like to say it's a marriage and and it's the marriage of the two um you know an artistic person might have a great eye they might um, feel the scene, feel emotionally the scene around them. They might um, get lost in that scene, so to speak, mm -hmm. and that can be great. But in doing so, they uh, may suffer a lot of quality of their images from the standpoint of what depth they should have shot at, what ISO they should have shot at, what lens choice they should have shot at, etc., cetera, etc., cetera technically minded the opposite side of that they get so caught up into all that sometimes they forget we're standing right in front of half them <laughs> you know they're worried about every you know they're, they they go into their color balance and they try and tweak it to the you know the finest little detail of greens and here's this incredible scene with clouds rolling in and out and they're missing it all yeah yeah and as, as somebody who produces reviews on youtube fairly frequently i 
I feel like the world is weighted more towards the engineer side. That might not be true, but that's the bias I get. And we get these people that are caught up in, you know, this lens versus that lens. And really, uh, they shouldn't let that hold them back. Just get one of those lenses and get out there and start photographing, really. But but how do you... Yeah. How, yeah. yeah. So how do you... How do you um, so, you, you know, working with the artistically minded, how do you help them... You know, really, when they're on camera, you said try not to be too intimidating. But what does that mean? Give us a little more detail. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, look, if you're if you're somebody that uh, you, you've got, you, you know that you're artistic and you, and 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 you love it, you pick up a camera for the first time. I mean, think about the first time you stepped into a car. <laughs> you know, you, you get in the car and there's all this stuff, you know, you're this kid that's looking at all these things and it's quite intimidating, you know. And um, I try and think of photography kind of like that for people is that, you know, if they haven't uh, really stepped into it, especially in today's digital world where it's not just the three elements. I mean, you're dealing with button after button and within within the button. <laughs> button, you know, menu systems. So I just try and break it down into bite-sized chunks. That's, a, that's the first thing I do, is I try and break it down into the three elements of exposure, you know, the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture settings, and talk about the exposure triangle. But with the artistic person, what I do is, is I, I, I tell them, you know, let's not worry about every little bit in your men, menu system right now in your camera. Photography still comes down to light and beauty and the composition and they, they relate to that. They're like light, beauty, composition. Okay. okay. I, you're speaking right. my language, you know, right. And once I do that, I, sorry, I just said, once I do that, <laughs> I can approach that exposure triangle, um, and, and talk to them about why that is so important, the benefits of that for them and what they're going to be able to create artistically. Right. I, you know, we throw around a lot of different buzzwords. You've got one in your title, demystified, you know, photography demystified. But I think that that is one of your strengths is you have literally taught thousands of beginners, uh, yeah. tens of thousands maybe, um, across this country. Yeah. And, and you have found this sweet spot. Reading your book, we've got this. It's very clear. It's not this kind of language where you have to look up in a glossary. It is understandable when you're breaking down that exposure triangle and those pieces. So I appreciate that. And I think that uh, we see that in the field as well. That wasn't really Thank so much you. a question. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, right. but, but that, I appreciate that, you know, and, and I have to say, if you, if you read the reviews, I'm, I'm blown away right now. I mean, we're at 337 reviews as of this morning it's just right off the launch it's just going crazy but you know review after review is uh, I feel like David is there in the living room talking to me I feel like uh, I can go out it's non it, it's it's technical enough to, 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 to deal with the technical side but it's uh, simplified enough into my ability to relate and um, I, that's awesome because I, I just know that those artistic people out there have struggled to find something that would work for them. So the engineer side, the, the guy that comes up to you or the girl that has, you know, their camera down and knows everything about it. How, how do you help them see half dome in front of them? Uh, well, you know, I send them to my wife, Allie, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that, and that's the harder person usually for me to teach, which you would think it would be the other way because the artistic person is struggling with all the buttons, but I, I found that spot of, of being able to, to, because I'm that way. So, um, but the technical person that's just really into everything that's in front of them, their camera, um, usually the way I approach that, uh, is, is I try and do, I, the first thing I try and do, honestly, is I try and break down the barriers between us. Like I try and just have a conversation, find out what their interests are. I find that with that type of personality, that if I find out who they are as a person, what they like, you know, what's their favorite sports team? I don't know, whatever it might be. It may sound funny, but that breaks down this barrier and allows a little bit of trust to come in. It's how we approach our portraiture as well. And so uh, it allows a little bit of trust to come in. Once that trust comes in, then I start talking to a man like, you know, hey, this is 
this is great. Your triangle exposure here is spot on. I mean, you've, you've nailed your exposure. Hey, you know what? Let's take a look at your composition here. And uh, as we're looking at the composition, what are you seeing? And, and they tend to be very linear, right? So you might see everything, the thirds, they got their, <laughs> you know, they not only have their, their uh, rule, their grid on their live display, but they've got their, you know, camera leveler. It looks like they're flying an airplane. Everything is up. And they're like, spending a half hour just getting the camera level and I say okay let's turn all of that off for a second you know let's just stop your exposure's dead on look away from the camera for a second look in front of you what do you see and they're say oh I see half dome great what do you see well there's a big mountain and, I, and I, I'm actually fishing a little bit, and then I tell them that. I say, look, this is what I'm doing here is I, I want you to think about this a little bit differently. I want you, 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 you're nailing all this stuff with the buttons and everything, but I want you to stop and actually look at what you're photographing. I want you to just take a breath and take in the moment and enjoy the moment. And then I want you to try and translate that to all of this technical knowledge you have, but don't get so caught up in the technical knowledge that you miss maybe what's happening happening right before you. Yeah. You know, Toby, we were shooting the other day half dome, just real quick on this, we were shooting half dome and uh, and the clouds started coming in and it started with a tiny little cumulus and literally within, I don't know, three, four minutes, entire cloud formations had formed around half dome that were incredibly beautiful. And that's where I actually did, I actually yelled across the bridge to everybody, everybody, stop, look up, now photograph. Don't miss what is happening because it's amazing. Don't miss what's happening before you in reality. Right. Yeah. That's important. You know, Christine and I talk about that too, especially on these trips and traveling. When we're traveling for photography, we do spend a lot of time looking through the viewfinder. And it's really important to step back from time to time and take in the whole scene because you're going to be able to see, well, that's a picture over there. That's a picture over there that I was missing because I thought this was the only picture in the scene. That's important. Um, yeah, yeah. If you I'm gonna put you on the spot, like one <laughs> one tip that somebody can walk away from this video and uh, feel like they are uh, making progress towards being a better photographer. One tip. Oh man, you did put me on the spot. Okay, being a better photographer. One tip for both both sides of the camp. Huh? Yeah, you got to bridge the divide right now, David. Br bridge the divide. Okay, so here's the tip. I mean, it is bridging the divide. That would be the tip. If you are an artistic person, I want you to take time to actually, you know, pull out your camera, spend a little bit of time going through the menu systems and understanding the different uh, uh, locations of all of your system. When you understand that, at least when you're out shooting, uh, it'll be much easier for you because you'll know how to get yourself around the camera and the menu system. So then the bridge, so, so the same would go for the technical side would be to actually go out and shoot and stop and take a moment and take everything in. I guess that's two tips, but <laughs> the tip would be to, to, to go after that, to, 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 to try and marry the 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 the, the opposites attract right yep. so that would be the tip would be for both sides to to actually try and understand the other and i really truly believe that that will take your photography to an entire new level if you do that great so get comfortable with your camera or get comfortable with being out there and finding uh the scenes in the images or in in the area around you nice. yeah absolutely and can I throw one more little tip in that combines sure. that? Okay, sorry. It's the 360-degree rule tool. Adam talks about this a lot, and that is, you know, if you're out shooting, stop and, and, and circle around and actually look what's around you, both, both camps, because sometimes, as you said, I mean, you can be looking at Half Dome, be right behind you could be something amazing happening that you're missing, and so stop, look up, do the 360, see what's happening around you. You got it. Nice. Nice. So you've got Photography Demystified. It is on Amazon right now. Just $1.99. That's a special. There's a Is there a period where that's going to end? Yeah, that is going to end on the 23rd of January. Okay. Uh, so it's a buck, a buck 99. I mean, I poured my soul into it. Uh, you, you know, I'm really excited about it. Toby, thank you. You wrote the forward. 
Uh, I, I like hard. I said, I believe that's that's well. That's why it's doing so well. Oh, I mean, I'm telling you that that forward, yeah. you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, buck ninety nine right now um, for the for the ebook version, uh, print version. Uh, will be due out sometime, I think, in March or April. That's obviously going to be more expensive. And the full price goes up, I think, on this. I think it's uh, I think it's set at uh, 5 bucks or 6 It's still going to be a great deal, but $1.99 right, uh, right now to the 23rd right of January. Right. And I'd say photographers of all levels, this is really targeted at, at the beginners, but there is pieces that I've been picking up as I've been reading through, and I also just appreciate uh, you know, kind of having a little bit of your brain, your vision, um, and in me, and I think that helps me, especially for teaching some, but just in general as photography as well. And now, this is Great. not you. You um, you have more in the works. What can you tell us? Yeah, yeah. So big picture, you know, this didn't start out this way, but um, uh, I, I enjoyed the process so much, uh, and uh, I can't believe how well it's doing. I'm really excited about that. Uh, fa- the the foundation or the uh the the reviews that have been coming in have encouraged me to do more so yeah so i've already already started thinking this whole thing of photography demystified there's a whole lot of aspects this is a foundational book but it's going to go from there we're going to have volume two which is going to get into um a lot more uh scenery type imagery uh or um you know nighttime photography um just just a, take it to a whole nother level. Uh, I'm going to do a travel photography demystified book. Um, and uh, I'm actually got some content written on those. And then the one I'm really excited about because I haven't seen anybody do anything like this is uh, I am excited about doing a children's photography book, a book that's for kids 13 and under that parents can actually go out and do some really great stuff with and help teach photography and get those kids excited about photography. I'm really excited. I'm nervous about it because it's a whole nother audience I have to speak to you. Um, and try and get in their brains, but but super excited about that, and we'll see where it goes from there. That's, That's all awesome. due by the end of the year. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, well, we'll check back in with you, and we'll be on trips talking about this stuff in the future as well. So, uh, David, thanks so much for taking a few moments to talk about bridging the divide, engineer versus artistic. Maybe I'll title this video "Engineer versus Artistic Photographer," and uh, we'll see what people say. Thanks so much. All right, thanks so much, Toby. All right.